how did your family get notification of deportation? Uh, I think you got a pink slip or something like that. Uh, the Jewish uh, administration in Prague, who was in charge of arranging the transports, delivered in the evening after everybody was at home. Uh, slips into um, you are requested to present yourself at uh, this and this location on this and this day. It was usually two days' notice, but uh, prior to this, everybody was uh, had his suitcases prepared, his uh, provisions, at, uh, and so on. Once the deportation started, we all knew we will sooner or later go and therefore prepared ourselves for it. Who told you about the date that you were deported? Was it your father? Uh, it, that was the Jewish uh, administration. Okay. The Jewish, uh, we called it Kille, Kultusgemeinde. And who, who in your family went with you in your transport? Uh, in that case, uh, my parents and myself. And what did you take with you? I, n <laughs> I think the pack, uh, the suitcases, uh, packing and preparing was uh, my parents uh, doing. Uh, I think we took uh, warm clothing, although we were d and uh, coats, because uh, although we were deported in August. Uh, we took uh, as much food as we could, uh, like uh, fat, uh, condensed milk, sweetened milk, uh, as we could carry, maybe some salami, uh, Hungarian salami. Uh, we had everybody carried a bed roll, what we called bed roll. -e. That's a sleeping roll, which is a couple of blankets, uh, uh, pillow, uh, and so on. And so you came to this uh, deportation point? Yes. And what did you see there when you got there? Oh, there was always uh, 1,000 people. Most of the processing was, again, done by the Jews. Uh, they, they, they did the dirty work. We had to sign off all our properties to the German uh, in payment for the relocation. It wasn't the deportation, it was relocation. And uh, we were, uh, all men's hair were cut um, to the uh, to the skull. A woman's hair was cut maybe one inch high. We got our numbers, and after two days of processing, we were marched to the train. What what number did you receive? My number was A A W eight o seven. A A W eight o seven. A uh, the first transport started with A. A to Z, then was AA, to AB, to AZ, and then it was AAW, AAA, AAW, and uh, later on they started with the number B, C, and D. Did anyone try? once they were given an, the pink notice of deportation to escape and not... Escape? There was no escape. Where would you go? Nobody would take you in. If they found uh, you in some, uh, unregistered in somebody's house, the whole f uh, their family would be executed. You didn't have papers, you didn't have anything. Last tape, we were talking about uh, your processing at the deportation center. You received your number. Um, tell us about 
at the deportation center, did you receive any, did you receive food in the days that you were there or water? Oh yes, we, uh, we received food. I don't recall what, but at that point we still, uh, all of us had some, some provision or some, uh, let's say, quote unquote, sandwiches uh, from uh, which we brought uh, with us. And of those days, where did you sleep? I don't even remember sleeping there, maybe sitting on the floor, but uh, uh, with the bed roll, maybe under the, your head. At, at, at the risk of, of, of asking, a, 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 what was on your mind at that point? What were you thinking about in the deportation center uh, as you were about to go uh, to some place? Whatever I was thinking, I don't recall. I, we knew we are going to Theresienstadt. That was 99% uh, sure. And I've seen many people who went there before me and some of them even rode back. Uh, I will have to jump here. Uh, since my father saw th that we will be going to Theresienstadt, he tried and managed to establish a subsidiary work uh, a shop for our factory in Theresienstadt. This way he would have contact and he would be employed and he could employ uh, his wife and other people. Uh, with the help of Erwin Diamant, his foreman, who was a Zionist, they managed to convince the Germans, I guess, and the Jewish uh, government of Theresienstadt to establish a barrack. Uh, where Jewish workers would continue working and producing the so-called leather goods. This had a big advantage that our friends and uh, trustees at the factory were in contact with us, could smuggle to Theresienstadt letters and food in uh, the material which was being sent there. Did he, when your father made these arrangements, he was in Prague when he did this? Yes, did he, he made the arrangement before he, before he left for Theresienstadt. But did he, did he ever go to Theresienstadt before he left? No, no, no. no so no, he no. did this he all from he there? He didn't, but he, I believe his foreman was already there. I don't recall when, but he must have left a uh, few months earlier. Couldn't have been more than three or four months earlier, and uh, this way we thought or we knew uh, we will have some uh, contact with the outside world. So, so now you going back again. You're going on the transport. T yes. Tell us about the transport. There's not much to say. The train ride from Prague to Bohushovice to the railroad station was something like um, an hour and a half. A cattle car? Uh, cattle cars. Were you together with your father? I think so, yes. And your, your mother? Were together. And your mother? Yes. About how many people were in the car with you? We had other sorters then to, uh, to count how many people we are. We had our luggage and uh, uh, must have been 40, 50 in the cattle car with a pail in the corner. Did people get sick on the train? No, uh, that was a, I don't recall, it was a short ride, it was uh, an hour and a half, it's 40 miles, so I don't know how long the ride was. And then what happened when the doors? Uh, in, uh, Bohushovic, we, we, we got off the train, we carried our knapsacks and our bedrolls. The luggage was uh, immediately confiscated by 
of course Jews who were working for the Germans and were sent to so-called Schleuser, Sluis. The, it was opened and all the contraband or most of the contraband uh, and precious things were taken out of the luggage and some of that uh, the luggage was returned to the owner, some of them wasn't. Were there any people who couldn't walk uh, were put on wagons, uh, men pushed, pulled uh, wagons and uh, were transported to Theresienstadt. The rest of us walked. In addition to the Jews who greeted you there that were working for the Germans, who were the guards when you got oh, off the train? Uh, most of the guards in uh, Theresienstadt were Czech gendarmes, the Czech. They were supervised by a German uh, national who was in uh, part of Czech uh, gendarmes, and the whole thing was supervised by half a dozen of SS, maybe a dozen of SS. Do you know what their names were? I knew a few of them, Heindl, uh, Seidel, Polak. I could uh, remember in others, but... How long was the walk from the, the, the train station to, uh, to Theresienstadt? I think it's two kilometers, a uh, mile and a half. And then what happened when you got to Theresienstadt? We were assigned uh, Ubication, which uh, I found out is not the uh, American world, that means uh, it's an Austrian uh, and uh, old Roman word for military barracks. I was uh, assigned to so-called Sudeten barracks. Uh, in a hall, uh, we were maybe 200 people per hall in uh, beds three stories high. Was your father in the same barracks as you were? No, he was somewhere else and I don't remember where. And your mother? Mother was with women uh, in, a, uh, in uh, Hanover, uh, Hanover barracks. Who told you where to go? I think those, those were, were the Jewish uh, po uh, police, uh, the so-called Ghetto Wache, which was uh, Jews who were acting under the orders of the Germans. In general, were the Jewish police uh, kind or benevolent to you, or were they violent? Neutral, no. Uh, benevolent, they couldn't show any benevolence. But 